Hello everybody, this is Kill Me Horde. Welcome back to some West of Loathing. Um let's see, so I got the pills. Ah, I might as well go back to dirt water and give the pills to the man on the thing. Tina notices the camp of bandits before you do and dives behind a large creosote bush before they spot you. I'll capture them alive. Cause I'm honorable. I jump out of the bushes, getting the drop on the bandits, and order them to freeze. After tying them up, you march them back to town and force them to admit they're their mothers what they've been up to. Out of gratitude, I get a freshly baked apple pie. Hey man, I got your broken leg pills. Here you go. Oh, thanks. I feel like a new man again, or at least the same man with a new leg. That's good. Go drink some milk or something, okay? Stop looking so angry. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to talk to uh, uh, Pete. All right, bang. Bandits in the pickle factory. Purple grass. Uh, that's all you can think of. Do you have any ideas of what we should do? Anything else? Yeah, thanks for the reminder, dude. You're, you're so helpful right now. All right. Back to the rescue mission. I found Fort Alden. Well, I'm not going there yet. Hey, here's your purple grass. Bye. Hmm. Snake whip can be upgraded. Well, I gotta go to the abandoned pickle factory and take care of all those bandits over there. You come across a goblin marching around in the woods. They're taller than a typical goblin, probably because their boots are taller than typical goblin boots. In fact, these boots are so tall they must be half stuffed with socks to keep the tops from jamming the goblin in the groin. The goblin sees you and marches over, attempts to look intimidating instead of awkward. Hey! Hey, human. Hey, what you to doing in this place? This my ground to stomping. Do you mean your stomping grounds? What? Your boots, which are very tall, I am seeing. Yes, tall boots to having, so also tall am I. That's cool, but they are uncomfortable seeming very. I have no sensation in my feet now, so this is fine. I too having no sensation in my feet now, so this is fine. I'm going to steal them with Hornswoggling. Your boots to having very nice, but... But? But? But what? Why are they not shining? Shining? Well, the dust is all around us. But I, for a fee, are to cleaning and to polishing. Oh! <gasps> Are you two agreeing with this deal? Yes, yes. The goblin wiggles out of its boots and you take them and ride away on your horse, which seems absurdly mean, but goblins don't typically wear shoes at all, so it's only pretty mean. Jack boots. These boots were named after their inventor, Jason Boots. The malapropism eventually stuck. Jason Boots. Haunted Pickle Factory. <gasps> it's haunted. Gotcha, Velas. She she was very very terrible. There's a patch of pepperoni mold growing out of this grave. As spooky as this factory is, the woods beyond it are even spookier. You feel a sudden electrical jolt as your hand touches the doorknob. Ouch. Oh no, you're late for your shift. Mrs. Vlass is going to be so mad. She might literally bite your head off. Okay, well, not literally, literally. Probably. Quick, get suited up. You clock in and hurriedly put on your bright green coveralls. Mrs. Vlass, as predicted, is furious. Late again? You better stop taking this job for granted. You think you're going to find a place with a nice dormitory and a reasonably priced company store like ours somewhere else? With your skills? Ha! You're doing three-hour shifts today, buster. Get to work or you're on pickle hopper duty. 
Pickle Hopper duty runs you ragged like always. Keeping the hoppers filled to keep a constant flow down the chutes means you're constantly at a near sprint. Because you have to manage the sh uh, kook shunts to keep the levels equal. If you get uneven pickle levels, Mrs. Vlast knows. Nobody knows how she knows, but she knows. A whack from her cane is the minimum you'll get. Damn it, damn it, damn it. At the end of the first six hour shift, you get a brief break. You cram a stale cheese sandwich into your mouth while Mrs. Vlast glares at her pocket watch, counting down three minutes to the second. Break's over. Second shift. You get over to the salt tank now. Oh, God. Imagine the salt tank isn't as strenuous as the pickle hoppers, but it's still a never-ending tension. Brand concentration has to be constantly monitored and kept at a very specific measurement, which means constant adjustments. Meanwhile, you can feel yourself desiccated from the haze of salt dust that fills the room. If anything in this place kills you, it's probably going to be salt tank duty. White lung is nasty business. Cough. Cough on your own time and get that salinity back to normal. It's supposed to be 976 parts per thousand. How hard is that to remember? 976, idiot. Please let me out of here. You get another 180 second break before third shift. You spend most of it drinking water. The company doesn't charge for water, but you've heard a rumor they're considering it. Breaks over, get to the boiler. Boiler duty means shoveling coal into a furnace. A furnace that runs a giant tank of boiling vinegar. It stinks in here. You've tried to work with your eyes closed, but Mrs. Vlast screams if you drop any coal on the floor. Or if you let the temperature get too low or too high, or just for no particular reason. At least you're used to the smell of boiling vinegar. In fact, you can't smell anything anymore. Let me out, please let me out. 190 degrees idiot not 189 not 191 what do you think we pay you for you don't really miss your sense of smell or not coughing all the time you don't really want anything anymore except to die let me out 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 let me out, let me out. With a, gra with a gasp, you finally snap out of that horrible hallucination or possession or whatever the hell that was. Jeez, you can still feel the sting of vinegar vapor in your eyes. Gherkins. Sweet pickles. Garlic dill pickles. Bread and butter. Cornichons. Half sour. You don't even know what those are. Dill pickles. Salt. Salt, salt. Gotta salt the salt. Salt. You alright there, partner? SALT! Jeez, okay, salt. Calm down. <gasps> what was... Oh, 791? Right? There's 791. It's not right. It's not right. You all right there, partner? All wrong. The temperature. It's not right. It's all wrong. It's not wrong at all. It's not right at all. All right, then do you. All wrong. Okay, man. 93. Free shovel. What was this one supposed to be? 190? Alright, each one is 5, this 3, this is 10, 2 does 10. Fifteen. Thirty-nine. Two hundred forty-five.
down. I think that's right. Warning, cook shunts are only to be operated by qualified personnel only. Gotta, gotta, can't sleep until it's right. You all right, Bart? Can't sleep, can't sleep, can't sleep, can't sleep. are to the same level. 11, 12, 10. They're not at the same level. 12, 10. 12, 10, 10. No, 12, 10, 11. Let's do that. 12, Eleven, eleven, eleven. Beautiful. Make me pickles. Something's not set up correctly. That's set up correctly, right? Oh, I gotta tell them. Yeah, I took care of the cucumbers. I got a pile of bones and cucumbers. I don't know that. All the same, all the same, all the same, all the same. Okay, so the salt's wrong. I don't remember the salt. It was definitely 790 something, I think. It was 93. I'm just gonna kill this guy. Cause... I'm gonna shoot me. And then I'll spooky all of it. Yeah. Oh my god, he fucking whiffed. He whiffed. Wait. Yeah. Ghosts take poison damage? Yeah, I'll pull out a snake. Wham! Dead. I just have to kill ghost pickles. Come on, Pete. How dare you, Pete? Kill it. I killed my snake. Screw it. I had to kill this guy for this. I had the numbers back, which is 976. Whoop. 
Oops. I have vinegars 190. Thanks. Give me my pickles. Ghost pickles. Make you too difficult to damage for the rest of the day by turning you into a spooky ghost. All that work for three pickles. Store just leads to an empty, dusty room. Huh. You could have sworn there were a bunch of cucumber storage tubs in there before. Store just leads to an empty, dusty room. You could have sworn there was a big tank full of pickle brine in there before. And a ghost. You could have sworn there was a vinegar tank and a boiler in there. And why would you make something like that up? Well, Tina, we should go to Fort All Dead. Oh, I'm opening this up. This crate I found. Crate in the road, which is not a crate, it's natural habitat. Poor lost crate, maybe you can help it. Depressed rancher candy. So. Fort all dead. That's a lot of skellies. Pardon me, sorry, sorry about that, beg your pardon. There's no force in the universe that can get this tarp off this crate. Hey, right, we got strategy. Deploy forces. A flush. Flush. Ah. Uh, flush. Rifleman insignia pin. Interesting. Barracks. Uh. Uh. I'm opening all these. Stoves, shelves, oiled brains and seltzer. Crushed chalk. Brandied mildew and seltzer. Salted fish eyes. Salted tongues. Bat guano with capers. Termites and water. Salted eyeballs. Sugared crickets. Smoked crickets. Desiccated ants. Pureed grubs. Crushed blood. Desiccated glands, cream fish eyes, and soda. There's a lot. Yeah, the mess hall. Trash can. Fine, I can't do it without stench resistance. Fine, I'll do it without stupid sweet smelling flowers. Give me my hat. Oh, ritual site? Cryptic note about ley lines. Evil looking leather bound tome. Introductory next mix. Read the diary. Seems to have been written by one of the necromancer's cultists. He and several others were reanimating the dead soldiers here on the theory that the best undead army would be a literal undead army. The hitch in the plan came when they raised the officers who decided they weren't going to take orders from a bunch of weirdo civilians. The last entry suggests the author and his cohorts were planning on abandoning their station and reporting back to the necromancer. But the entry ends abruptly in the middle of a sentence. Fascinating. No name, no name, no name. This mass grave is absolutely teeming with those skeletal riflemen. They don't seem to be interested in getting out, but you can definitely jump in there if you're itching for a fight. Oh, yeah, I'm going in there. See this man? See this man? What? Ah, bam, bam, bam. He's dead. I think it's just a farming spot, so not really worth it for me to farm. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry, pardon me. I'll read that. Uh, for my necromancer room. Yeah, I'll read it. Uh, whatever. Whatever, Grandma. Your mind becomes stained with grim secrets. You got the skill, grin and skull. Skulls are scary and ghosts are scary. You know what's double scary? Yes, you do. Spooky damage. All right, Tina. 
We need to go to a store. We need to go, we need to go to a store. For disposable binoculars. And sell one of my shovels. Uh, I'll see if Fort Cowardice will get me a location. One more location. Come on, Fort Cowardice. Snake Spring. Where is it? Snake Spring. You hear a rattling noise behind you. Another rattling noise off to your left, and a third rattling noise from somewhere ahead. You conclude that you've either stumbled into a nest of babies or a nest of rattlers. A quick glance confirms that it's the latter. Not unexpectedly, really. This is no place for babies. <whistles> Whistle for Tina. Sneak screen. Oh my god. I grabbed a big snake. Is this a spring snake? It, it is a spring. I got its spleen. Grab a handful of snakes. Don't worry. I shall shoot a nanny. I missed all of them. Spooky. We are too powerful for you. You cannot do anything to us. Oh, I'm not instant killing either of these. Okay. Try again. Snake venom. I'm gonna leave the snake spring alone now. Go to Silversmith. Bake bullets. Hey, Pete. What should we do next? Any other ideas? Oh yeah, I gotta take the remains of the Gherkin brothers. Yeah. To dirt water. Thank you. You want to bail for me? Nope. Okay. I got the pickle factory remains. The Gherkin brothers. It was really weird. Don't talk about it. Thanks. All dead. All dead. Lazy a dude ranch. Maybe later. <gasps> a circus. Clowns. Reach for the sky, clown. You quickly turn around and see a grizzled looking man in all black clothes except for his hat, which is white with brightly colored spots. He's pointing a, gr a gun at you. What are you calling a clown, jerk? Mm, it's true, you don't have a clown's markings. You mean like a stupid polka dot hat that only a clown would wear? You may be no clown, but you're a fool if you think I'll accept your insults. Alright, bring it, Chuckles. <laughs> Chuckles the clown. You're gonna die. Oh god. That's a lot of poison on him. I got his hat. I stole his hat from him. 
Looks like somebody's been washing ferrets in this thing. Yuck. An old burned crate. Guess it came with the property. <gasps> a pistol. Uh, if I wasn't doing a lot of the... What is that made out of? If I wasn't doing a lot of the uh, poison stuff, I would use that pistol. Because it increases my moxie by a lot. Hey, like, howdy. I'm selling herbal remedies. Care to buy? What kind of herbal remedies? The kind that are gifted to us by Gaia without any interference by human hands. So, weeds? That's a derogatory term created by the man. But yeah, basically. Herbal remedy doesn't do anything. Thanks. I like your hat. Howdy. Hey, yeah, howdy, man. What's happening? That's what I was wondering. Oh, not much, man. We moved on to this little patch of land to grow crops, but then we decided it's more natural to just let Gaia grow whatever she wants, right? I bet that's a lot easier, too. <laughs> right on, man. Neat. Where'd you get that hat? Oh, this? A friend of mine made it, man. Uh... I forgot which one. What do you take for it? Uh, I've been thinking of trying to do style, man. Maybe like one of those hats the army guys used to wear back in the day. Kind of like, like as a kind of ironic statement, man. There's an old fort over yonder that way. I'll swap you if you can find one of those, man. Like this one? Nice, man. Barter is like commerce, man, except natural. Can you dig it? Yeah, groovy. Manure. Howdy, I'm Bartholomew. I'm Luis, Luis Lathrop. Why the long face, Luis? Ah, oh, geez, basically because I'm stuck here farming with a couple of dummies who don't know how to farm a dang thing, so they just let the weeds grow and call it natural. I'm so sick of eating dandelions, I could scream. Yeah, why don't you leave? I haven't got any meat or any other prospects or anywhere to go. I mean, dandelions are terrible, but they're better than eating dirt. This is such a mess. How'd you get in this predicament? I headed west after graduating baking school and fell in with these two because they talked a big game about natural grains. Fool that I was, I didn't realize all they were really interested in was getting silly on loco weed and not doing any work. Hmm, so you're looking for work? Gosh, yes, desperately. The only trade I know is baking, though. Do you know somewhere that's hiring a baker? Heck, even unpaid would do better than this if it comes with a room and board. I just want to get out of here. I don't, sorry. Shucks. Well, if you hear anything, please let me know. I, I can do that. Look at their look at their garden. This is how, what their farm is. Eat it. I had to eat the thing. Ah, but the damage. Alright, I'll see I'll see how it do. I'll see how it do. Lasso. This is a little weird. You didn't expect to find a circus all the way out here. There's basically nobody around for miles. There's a rodeo clown manning the ticket booth. Well, there hasn't actually been a rodeo since the cows came home, so I guess he's just a clown. Ugh, clowns. What's the matter? You don't like clowns? They're creepy. When I was little, my uncle would give me nightmares with old stories about them. I'm oh, sure you mean the old tales about demon cows and demon clowns fighting down in hell? Yeah. And how rodeo clowns dress up like that because the first rodeos were reenactments of those battles and became a traditional thing. Yeah, I remember them stories from when I was a youngin' myself. Ain't thought about that in decades. Don't be fouling your britches, though. These clowns are just feathers of makeup. Yeah, no, still creeps me out, though. As you approach the clown, puts on that basically cheerful facial expression that retail employees use when the last thing they want to deal with is a customer, but they're not allowed to say so. Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow, sir. How can I help you? I'd like to see the circus, please. We came to the right place then. <laughs> but if you want to get inside, you'll need a ticket. And presumably you can sell me one? 
Why, I certainly, certainly I can. That's my job after all. For you, sir, a ticket will cost 5,000 meat. Say what? Doesn't it, does it seem a bit high? I promise you, sir, at this price, it's a real steal. You've got that right. Why is it so expensive? Well, now, nah, this is no podunk little traveling circus. We've got rides, games, food, and an amazing demonstration of knife throwing skill by none other than Barnaby Bob himself. What kind of ride you got? Well, I suppose I should say ride, but we haven't had a single grizzly merry-go-round accident since, well, since we stopped turning it on. What kind of games you got? Oh, we got tons of them. Does three count of tons? Three is more like some. We got some of them. What kind of food? Got your favorites. Popped corn, sarsaparilla with the fancy new bottle caps, and gets this. Did you hear about that new thing a fella invented? Cotton candy? Yeah, I think I might have. Well, it's still patented, but we're pretty sure we figured out how it works. Mostly, more or less. Tell me about Barnaby Bob. Oh, the boss is a real master of knives, let me tell you. He does this amazing stunt where he gets a volunteer from the audience up on stage and throws knives at them. He never misses his target. Did you leave out the part where he puts an apple on their head or something? What? Oh, right, sure. You aren't doing a very good job of selling me on this. Why? Whatever you do mean. Well, I'm hornswoggling this one. See that hornswoggling? I'm hornswoggling. Look, I'll drop the act. You don't know who I am, do you? Should I? Bartholomew McNugent, Bureau of Traveling Entertainment Inspections. Bureau of... That's not a thing. Is that a thing? It's a thing. A very serious thing. And your ticket prices won't be an encouraging note in my report. Whoa, now, hold on, Chief. I was just joshing you. Come on, you know how clowns do? Mm -hmm. So what's the actual fee? 500 meat. I don't have enough horn swoggling to get this. We just stamp your hand for re-entry. There you go. Enjoy the show. What about my partner? Partners get in free. Thanks. Oh, I could have made it better. I had the horn swoggling. Hmm. Grit and glamour. Yep. I'm going to the circus. Stroll into the circus, actually, I guess it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. And find it almost entirely deserted. There aren't more than a dozen or other patrons besides yourself. There are a bunch of clowns around working at the booths and so on. More clowns than customers, which is a little unsettling. But at least the lines won't be very long. The merry-go-round has a dirty canvas tarp over it. Condemned until further notice. We encourage anyone suffering from horse bites to consult a doctor. You are not a clown. I'm not talking to that. This extremely muscular clown seems to be guarding the entrance to some sort of stage. Stage show ain't till later. When? Later. Yeah, but when exactly? Later. Okay, jeez. Test your aim. Well now, fella, I like to think I know a customer with a sharp eye and a quick hand when I see one. How'd you like to test your skills against a, dame, a game of dexterity? What's the game? Well, on the wall behind me, I got a bunch of thick-skinned, under-inflated balloons. For tin meat, I'll loan you a cheap and accurate pistol and a pile of badly made ammunition and your goal is to pop as many of those balloons as you can before the pistol stops working. That's an unusually honest sounding description. I've discovered making the challenge sound exactly as difficult as it is only makes people more determined to be the one who beats it. So what's the prize? A ticket to Barnaby Bob's stage show, which is otherwise sold out. It's a rare catch, my friend. Oh, I'll do it. I'll shoot like the wind. Oh, uh, I, I gotta get the... I gotta shoot from the hook. Nope. Alright, so I need 30 moxie. I can actually... Uh, I think I can do some stuff here. So, let me look at my hats. My fake popette gives me 5 moxie. Right? But if I wore the colorful hat... And I took uh, the snake skin that I have somewhere. 
and apply it to that. It does seven moxie. My moxie is now 30. And I can shoot like a jaguar. Get the circus shoot. I'm going to change my hat back to fake popat. I like the popat. Test your mind. What's the game? I need 30 mysticality. I'm going to give it a lot. 30 mysticality. I don't know if I can pull that out my butt here. St. Cortada's. can't do anything without food. Hello, person. Kid here, looking around with a sad look on his face. You okay, kid? Did you lose your parents? I lost my lucky bottle cap. You haven't seen it, have you, sir? No, I'll keep an eye out. What's it look like? It's shiny steel, and it's on a little chain. Okay, I'll let you know if I find it. Clyde, who's selling rubber toy balloons, when he sees you, he has your attention. He smiles and waggles the balloons at you enticingly. How do your fella interest you in a toy balloon? How much are they? For you? Just 30 meat. Colors. What? We'll just take a look. Red. They're all red. How do you make them float like that? Well, there's nothing to it. Heck, they all float around here. <laughs> of course. I'll take the balloon. Balloon. It's red. Tell me more about the circus. Really, it's more of a carnival, but not. let's not split hairs. What would you like to know? What are your traveling plans? I haven't decided yet. That's why we set down somewhere a little bit more rural. Keep things relatively quiet while we scout around. Get the lay of the land and all. <laughs> Where'd your travel from? What, was your previous stop interesting? Oh, northwest-ish. It was a little hole in the ground kind of place you wouldn't have heard of. <laughs> why is everyone working here a clown? Oh, it's traditional when the, uh, what'd you call them, rodeos stopped being put on. The rodeo clowns took other jobs at the circuses and carnivals. Over the years, it just became a normal thing for carnies to be clowns. It's a community, you might say. <laughs> Who's Barbie Bob? Oh, well, the boss is a real famous showman, though I'm not surprised you wouldn't have heard of him around here. <laughs> Got an eye like a hawk and he's a real whiz with those knives of his. Don't miss his show, it's a real highlight of the carnival. Okay, I'll see you around. Test your might. A game of strength? Hey, kind of hard. A game of strength? I might be able to manage a strength. I might not be able to ha manage a strength. Okay, I can if I can upgrade my muscle twice. Which I cannot. So therefore, I shall go back to what I was wearing. With my uh, stuff maxed out. Is there stuff this way? Balloon man. Aren't you on the other side of the midway just now? <laughs> nope, that's the other balloon guy. We dress alike and use the same face paint. Did we fool you? Let's see. Cotton candy. I'm not I'm not reading all this crap right now. So they actually made a cotton? What? No, cotton's indigestible. No matter how much chocolate you cover it with. Found that out the hard way, did you? Whew. He's got a slide whistle. If I had a slide whistle, I'd be doing it. Or is this a cause? Stay on your beat! 
Oh, that's a lot of speed, though. How much are these drinks? 205? Alright, I'll take one. Sarsaparilla. Are they actually a foot long, 12 inches? Because a lot of guys say that, but... I'm going to stop you right there, seeing as there's ladies and children present. You want one or not? How much are they? What are the condiments? Got onions, pickle relish, three kinds of mustard, and two kinds of ketchup. Two kinds of ketchup? Yep, got both ketchup and catsup. Two kinds of mustard. Brown, yellow, and blue. Blue, blue mustard? Looks like I'm all out of blue, sorry. Clown sausage, that's... I'd like to see the lost and found. A lucky bottle cap. I take the bottle cap. So it's this kid's bottle cap, I have to give it to him. No problem, kid. Now you're happy. It's a real nice balloon. You want to trade? Why do you give me it back? Oh, well. That's all the time I have for this episode today, everybody. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.